Tiger Moth 120 from Nitro Planes. Big airplane. 120 ASP engine. Right now I've got a 15.8 prop. I've also got a 16-inch uh, prop downstairs. So fuel fill on top where the tank. Oh, I gotta tighten that down a little bit. <laughs> Put the fuel fill up here on top. Since the real airplane has the tank on top, I figured what the heck that would look kind of cool. So the fuel fill line goes down to the tank. Had to assemble the whole thing to find the holes for these because they were not on the kit as the directions said. Should have been some holes pre drilled there and they weren't. So you had the uh, wires that came with the kit but brought all new hardware. The attach point down here that was supposed to go in here by the ring wing root, I actually put on the top of the wing with some CA because there really wasn't enough room to fit it down in there. You can see the flying wires again. Again, the wires that what came with the kit. The rest of it is uh, Dubro hardware that I bought. Power on hookup. By the way, if you notice, this one is slightly darker. I had to uh, recover it with some uh, aluminum mono coat. There, when it when it arrived, the trailing edge, this whole trailing edge, was crushed. Used a horn from another airplane that I had left over somewhere. Uh, this is the setup I used for the uh, aileron interconnection. Pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. Cockpit is. Uh, picture that I used. It's actually from my GWS moth and I blew it up so it's, it's blurry if you get up close from, from a distance it looks pretty good. <laughs> Pilot. I picked this guy up at a uh, swap meet recently. He's a little paint. I got some nice sideburns and uh, I'll repaint him, clean him up, get him looking better. But right now he's, I think he's a quarter scale pilot and he fits in there pretty good. Right now I have the uh, cockpit floors removed but I'll put them in before I go flying and attach him. On the Ford cockpit I have three switches. This one is the onboard glow. I got a uh, small C-cell battery down in the front so for starting I can just flip this switch I don't have to worry about a glow stick. But in the event I leave the switch on and kill the battery down inside here I actually put the uh, glow adapter right over here. So in case I do want to use my glow stick, I still can. If I turn my transmitter on, you can see this is servo. And that's for, I mean, sorry, that's receiver. This is servo, and then the glow is for starting. So, the tail feathers. The rudder is a uh, pull pull cable. Boy, it's nice too. Nice and smooth. A lot of throw on the rudder. Again, I'll put some expo on that, and I'll put some expo on the elevator too. Now, this is uh, the servos I'm using are kind of kind of loud for the elevator. Really loud, but they work. They're uh, GP Hextronics ones, but they're they're working pretty well. The tail wheel. I put a Dubro tail wheel on it. Of course, as you can see, I already lost the cap nut that goes on here, so I'm going to have to find, find that. It's somewhere around the house here. Um, just put a, uh, a bar through the uh, rudder and attach the springs. Don't ask why the uh, springs are stretched out like that. It's a long story. Because the servos are facing on opposite sides, I had to put this one you notice the connection is above is above the servo and then on the other side the connection is below the servo that's so they both go there on a Y and so the elevators both go up together and down together you got to do it that way you could put this one ideally you'd put this one on the re, uh, servo reverser and then put that on top and eventually I'll do that but right now it works fine the way it is so underneath the plane we have the landing gear. They're nice looking landing gear, but they have absolutely no shock absorption. Uh, so there's no give, so I guess if you don't grease your landing it's going to do some damage. Um, that's why I have the inflatable tires on there, hopefully a little bit. But uh, 
I think eventually I'm going to have to get some different gear that, or something that I thought of is cutting these cross members, sliding a tube over them, and then on either end adding some bungees. That way you might have a little bit of flex in the gear, but still not a lot because this piece coming across here is really rigid. Offset to the right of the motor is, and then it sits way up high because of the alignment with the cowl. But if you look straight down, let's see if we can see it looking straight down, you can see the offset to the right. So now to mount the cowl, I epoxied one, two, three blocks here, and then two blocks on either side. Um, I was going to do the bottom, but after I got all five of those on, I figured that was enough. Um, seems to hold it pretty well. There isn't much clearance between the uh, 90 degree elbow. I actually, when I bought this thing, I had to shave half the threads off that uh, screw into the motor. Otherwise it stuck out about this much further, so it seems to be working alright. Um, for the cow, I'm going to enlarge those openings because I need, I need some more cooling air going through there. I did have to enlarge the opening just a little bit for the uh, alignment of the engine again because of the offset and also I couldn't it needed to go a little bit higher but I couldn't put any higher without having to shave a lot off the mo engine mount so I put it as the instructions for this airplane are horrible <laughs> they don't tell you anything one of the things that are mi that's missing from the instructions is after you slide the top wing over the uh, spar tubes uh, spar tube here and a rod in the back. There's two screws on either side that go down through the tabs that stick out of the center section and into a nut plate in the wing. And that's what keeps the upper wing from pulling away. There's absolutely no mention of that in the instructions. And the instructions are pretty horrible. One thing too is to, uh, for all these, they don't provide any lock washers, so it's a good idea to go get some lock washers and uh, put lock washers on all that so nothing backs off. Uh, the windows, I used, I found some uh, metallic uh, contact paper and cut strips and made the window frame and then I just screwed it in with a drop of CA in each hole before you put the screw in because it's going in the balsa so it's really soft. Okay, so we should be ready to go flying. I got the uh, fuel lines all clamped off with some uh, clamps from Home Depot I found. Uh, use short screws so you don't puncture the fuel tank. Got some phenolic washers under the muffler clamp to help isolate the heat from the firewall. Uh, I got some lead, a little bit of lead ballast on the motor mount. Eventually I'd like to get a uh, fuel dot up here so it'll make it a little easier for fueling. Um, but a hole in the floor of the cockpit for my glow stick should I need to use the glow stick for starting. The switches on the instrument panel all work. Uh, onboard glow, servo power, and receiver power. And the pilot is ready to go, I believe. Um, I went ahead and put some Velcro on the bottom of the pilot, and he pops right out. If I ever need to get underneath the floor of the cockpit to get to the rudder servo. So I guess we're ready for the maiden flight. Uh, let's see how it goes. <laughs> 